welcome to week four of 40 Weeks with Dr. Martin, which is all about pregnancy tests. When can you take them and how do they work? How soon can I take a pregnancy test? I can't wait to know. This is inevitably the first question that comes to mind when you're trying to get pregnant and you're waiting for that confirmation. How soon can I find out? Well, you're in luck. This week's episode, week four of 40 Weeks with Dr. Martin, answers just this question. I'm Dr. Eva Martin. I graduated from Harvard Medical School and trained in OBGYN. I am passionate about giving you honest, straightforward answers to all your pregnancy questions here on 40 Weeks with Dr. Martin. Let's say you're sitting in your bathroom right now with a pregnancy test in one hand and a watch in the other, and you need me to get to the point and answer this question in the next three minutes before that test result turns up. So for those of you who want the answer, the quick and dirty answer, it's the first day of your missed period. So the day that you thought you should get your period and you don't, take the test that day. For those of you who want a little more detailed answer about all the gray areas, let's dive in. What exactly is the pregnancy test testing? HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. HCG is a hormone released by the placenta. If you're new to this whole pregnancy world, the word placenta may seem foreign. You may have heard of the afterbirth, which is another term for placenta. Amazingly enough, in addition to making an entirely new human, your body also makes an entirely new organ during pregnancy, the placenta. It's also inside the uterus with the fetus and funnels nutrients from your bloodstream to the growing baby. Pretty amazing stuff. I can get pretty excited about the placenta. It's an amazing organ, but I'll try to rein it in for the purposes of this video. Suffice it to say, the placenta secretes HCG after implantation. So now you're probably asking yourself, when and what is implantation? I just want to know if I can take a pregnancy test. Hang in there while I dive down this one more rabbit hole. I'm sure you just finished watching week two of my video cast about timing for fertility. So you remember that the egg and sperm meet to make their magic in the fallopian tube. When they meet and fuse, you have fertilization. That one cell then splits in half and splits in half and splits in half, you get the picture. The one cell becomes many cells as it's floating through the fallopian tube on the way to the uterus. About nine days after the big fertilization moment, that little ball of cells sticks to the inside wall of the uterus. This moment is implantation. After implantation, the cells growing in your embryo start to release HCG. Some of those cells become the placenta. As the placenta grows, it delivers more and more HCG to your bloodstream and your urine which is where the pregnancy test is going to detect the HCG and turn positive. So the question is, when does the HCG level in your urine get high enough that the pregnancy test can detect it? Urine pregnancy tests can detect HCG anywhere between 20 to 100, depending on the brand. When you are not pregnant, your HCG level is less than 5. The week after fertilization, which is the third week since your last menstrual period, HCG is somewhere between your non-pregnant baseline of around 5 since implantation hasn't occurred yet. So a urine pregnancy test usually won't be positive even if you are pregnant. The next week after implantation occurs, the pregnancy will start to release HCG into your bloodstream. By the end of the week, when your next period is due, the HCG should rise up well above 100, which a pregnancy test can detect. An early pregnancy test could turn up positive up to six days before your missed period. But your average run-of-the-mill pregnancy test is going to start turning positive with good accuracy the day you miss your period. Now, every day beyond that, the placenta is growing larger, putting out more HCG into the bloodstream and then urine, and so every day after the missed period, if you are pregnant, the pregnancy test is more and more likely to turn up positive. 
Each pregnancy test has its own accuracy profile, which you can usually find on their website. For instance, if you look on the First Response website, you can dig around and find their statistics for detecting pregnancy. For 76% of women who were pregnant, the first response turned positive five days before the day of their missed period. By three days before the missed period, the test was positive for over 99% of these pregnant women. Now, remember, not all of these days are exact. I can't predict with perfect certainty exactly which day you ovulated, conceived, implant implantation occurred, when your period should have happened, so you have to give or take a couple days on either side for all of these estimates. So that being said, if you've missed your period on the first day and your pregnancy test is negative, try again the next day. And I recommend trying with the first pee of the morning, top of the morning. It's the pee that's going to be the most concentrated, so it's the most likely to turn up positive if you're pregnant. I'm assuming at this point you have either decided it is or is not time to take a pregnancy test. If you're still undecided, some clever web designers have made it really easy. If you look up pregnancy test calculator, you'll find quite a few. Here is the first response website again, and no, they're not paying me. You can enter your last period, how long your periods are, and get a date to start taking pregnancy tests. I read an awesome article in the New York Times a couple months ago about when pregnancy tests first came to market. It turns out that the technology existed for a while, but doctors and pharma companies and medical device guys all thought that women couldn't handle the truth. They said that unmarried teenagers would jump off bridges when they found out the results when they were alone at home. Fortunately, thanks to pioneers like Margaret Crane, the pregnancy test finally did come to the market and become available over the counter for people like you and me to just go to the Walgreens and get it in 1977, which was long after the technology existed. The original pregnancy test prototype was very different from the pee on a stick model we're used to today, but it took a lot of innovation to get from being required to see a doctor in person to learn if we're pregnant to being able to do it from the convenience of our own homes. Now that we're this deep into the journey of when you can take a pregnancy test, you might be wondering how exactly they work. I mean, they are giving you one of the most important pieces of information of your entire life. The pregnancy test consists of an absorbent pad that you pee on. The pee travels up the pad until it hits a bundle of fibers. The fibers are coated in antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that can bind to various other substances. I like to think of antibodies like little lobsters that grab onto their prey. And each antibody lobster has its own specific prey. In the case of a pregnancy test, there are three distinct antibody lobster zones that the urine passes through as it absorbs up to the fiber bundle. The first zone is the reaction zone. You won't see this zone when you're looking at the test. In the reaction zone, the antibody lobsters grab onto the hormone HCG that we've been going on about all day. These lobsters have little friends attached to them, enzymes or activators, that can cause color changes in the other zones. The second zone is the test zone, which is likely labeled with a T on your test. As your urine travels along up the fiber bundle, it will bring the complexes from the reaction zone along with it. The test zone also has little lobsters that capture HCG. Now you have HCG molecules that are attached to the antibodies from the reaction zone and their color changing activator from the reaction zone getting caught by the test zone lobster. When HCG is present, these complexes from the reaction zone get caught by the test zone lobsters and the color activator interacts with the dye in the test zone to result in a line popping up. The third and final zone is the control zone, which is likely labeled with a C on your test. This is the line that always lights up even when you're not pregnant. This zone exists solely to make sure that the test is working. There are yet more antibodies in the control zone. These ones are called anti-mouse antibodies. 
but they basically just grab onto the antibodies from the reaction zone. As confusing as it sounds, it's an antibody to the antibody. It doesn't matter if HCG is present or not from the control zone antibody lobsters to grab onto their prey, the reaction zone antibodies. Now those color activator enzymes are still stuck to the reaction zone antibodies, so now they interact with the dye in the control zone and always turn up positive. There are few things more confusing and frustrating than a questionable line in the test zone area. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google is my pregnancy test positive question mark and you'll see a ton of photos of questionable lines. You can always redo the test until you're dehydrated or run out of tests. You can wait another day when the HCG will be higher and thus the test more likely to be positive if you are pregnant. Uh, and that is a good way to figure out a more definitive yes or no with each passing day. In the meantime, while you're waiting to take another test, you can just keep watching 40 Weeks with Dr. Martin videos. I'm here to hang out with you. Until next time, good luck. Didn't take notes fast enough for my clever infographics? You can find complete notes on my website, thepregnancydoc.com. There you can also find a list of references. Trust me, they're all from really legit sources like the CDC and ACOG. Thank you for tuning in to this week of uh, week four of 40 Weeks with Dr. Martin. It's been so much fun talking about pregnancy tests with you, and I hope that if you are sitting in the bathroom waiting for a positive, that it comes up. Uh, if not, I hope that it comes up tomorrow for you, or whenever your first day of your first missed period is. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel. You can find me online at thepregnancydoc.com or on Twitter at Dr. Eva Martin. And until next time, I hope you have a fantastic week five. Please note, nothing contained in this video is medical advice, just opinions and information. Please ask your doctor about everything and call her if something is wacky. Your situation is unique, so only your doctor can give you medical advice. Mm -hmm.